And when you make lots of stuff, you're obviously your partners and people get fed up of you having hundreds of wooden items in the house that you've made. So, you know, this is a practical item. Okay, in our house we are big on bread. I bake bread every other day, sometimes every day. Depending on how much we're eating at the time. We have we have an egg on toast for breakfast every day, so I'm always making loads of that. We have rolls for lunch, uh, so we tend to do batches of nine rolls at a time, and then freeze the ones we don't need. Always need something to cut your bread on. So I was thinking a nice little project would be to make a breadboard. Um, in my head, I'm thinking a round breadboard, and across the top, I'm gonna carve the words, bread is life. That's my plan. Now, there's different ways I could do this. I can make this brown round breadboard very easily on the lathe. But I thought I was actually going to make a jig up with some MDF. Make a round jig. I've got one here similar actually to what I want, but this one has a handle on. Sometimes I make these for sale uh, out of some nice wood if I find some nice wood. So I always keep the jigs to one side. But I'm just going to make a completely round jig, about a foot wide, 30 centimetres. And I've got this piece of sycamore here that I got a while ago. There is some knots and some bad bits here, which I don't, so it's not gonna make it much use. So I think we're gonna have to go here, cut out ourselves a section, we'll plane it right down as well, make it a little bit thinner. So about an inch, 25 mil thick maybe. And sycamore is sweet as anything to carve. So it carves nearly as nicely as lime, but it's a bit harder, uh, ideal for a breadboard. So yeah, if you want a nice wood for a nice bit of carving or turning, then I really recommend Sycamore. I've become more and more in love with it uh, over the years. Really quite enjoy using it. I'm going to do this as simple as possible. We use the router to make ourselves a perfect circle. I genuinely, this ratchet system on the Festool router Almost makes having a Festool router worth it for that alone. It's just such a sweet mechanism on it. Now this is where I try and find a half inch, decent sized half inch cutter. It's had the least abuse. That one feels sharp. Okay, this is a really stupidly simple jig. It's not as good as a normal circle cutting jig that you can make, but it is easier. So I'm just gonna use the bars that come with the fence. Wind them up by hand a little bit so they won't move. So then we've got this on here and now we can adjust that. So I've just screwed, tightened it up with two little screws in there into the bars. It's, it's, it's not, it's not an amazing jig, it's not one to use all the time, but for this it's fine. And then we've got the point there, which will be the centre of the circle, and we can just measure to the inside of the bit. This is unplugged and safe while I'm working with it. So we want to go from there to there. Wants to be whatever, oh no, haha. <laughs> Wants to be half of what we want, doesn't it? So it wants to be 150. Now we're working MDF, which is horrible. Put on our little dust shroud. Okay, got my EMFs on. I've got a dust extractor on. I have got my air filter on for my workshop as well. I do hate working with MDF, and I know I harp on about safety sometimes. But one thing I wish I'd taken more seriously was dust extraction and noise. So those are the two things. Nothing's gonna hit my eyes here. Can't wear it all the time. And it's fine dust, so but that's a good thing. Okay, we're gonna cut counterclockwise. We're not gonna plunge it too far. There we go, a perfect circle. 
admittedly with a hole in it, which is why we can't do it straight onto the board. What we could do is glue a piece on top of our board and then route it round. But I think it's easier to have this, and what we'll do is we'll clamp it and we'll route it in a few times round uh, using a copy bit. That's my thinking anyway. So, cut some of this up now, and we can make ourselves a board. My plane will only go 12 inches wide, 300 wide, so I have kind of, I'm well, I'm just within my limits of what that will do, but it just means I need to rip off this edge now on the table saw before I do that. Board plane down roughly to the thickness I want. It's about 26, 27 mil thick. It's a shame that board wasn't thin up. It's all I've got, and I haven't got the ability to resaw, unfortunately. So now I'm going to draw a very rough line around it, kind of like a pencil width away from where I actually want to cut it. I'm going to cut that out on the bandsaw, and that will just make it easier when I'm routing rather than having to plow through all that waste. Kind of gives you a bit of a better cut. Let's go and cut that on the band saw. Ooh. With that cut out now, the plan is we use a bearing guided bit. Ideally, I could do with one with a bearing at the nearer the top of the shank, because I'm not going to put this in the table, I'm going to hand hold it as I go around. The bearing's on the bottom, so what it means is we'll clamp it, you could glue it, it'll use some, you know, uh, use some super glue or something, but I'm not going to, just clamp it together, and then we'll go around the outside, like this, with that running on there, and that should be able to do it in one pass. Big router comes in good sometimes. No, it's not a big router. Medium router. Okay, what we've created ourselves, it's a very smooth, very round, very soft disc out of sycamore. Quite nice, and that'd be fine as a breadboard as it is, but we're gonna add some embellishments to it now. So I've gone on the computer and used the utmost of my ability on word art to make myself a curve that roughly fits where I want it to go. So I'm gonna find the center now, mark the center off of this piece of wood. which is what we didn't have before. And I want to use a compass actually to draw a line and a groove around it, but I don't want to make a hole in the center of this with my compass. So I'm gonna clamp a piece of wood there and run it off that. I've put some witness marks either side, line that up and that looks fairly even. Happy enough with that. So we get some photo mount.
So we leave that for a few minutes now just to go kind of a little bit tacky. Since we're always in chickens in my workshop. You should always clean the can out when you finish with it. So what you're meant to do is turn it upside down and then spray it till it goes clear. Simple. Otherwise you come to it next time, it's all blocked up. It does waste a fair bit of adhesive, especially when you're only gluing a little tiny bit like that, but better to keep it clean. All right, it's always tricky to know how to hold it, but I've got one of these boards I use quite often for holding my carbons down. That's a bit of birch ply actually. It's a little bit rough on the back side, so let's give it a quick. Save scuffing up the back of the workpiece. Put that in there. Oh, that'll work. Wedge up that side. Just put a piece across the top. And we'll step that away just slightly. That can go in there. And what this means just makes it really easy when you carve in. Take the wedges out. Turn it to the side you want to work, wedge it back up, not too tightly, you don't want to damage the edge, sycamore isn't that tough. Okay, so we're going to start off by carving ourselves a little groove around there, just a bit of detail around the whole board, and then we can look at reducing this right in right now. I've got quite a deep gouge there, I mean, that's like a number 10 or a number 8 or something, and I'm going to, I've marked out two lines which I'm going to go across. And we're gonna use our mallet. And we're gonna be really, really mindful of the grain, which way it's going. So what I don't wanna do is be taking big chunks out. I don't wanna take too much at once, which I think I was trying to do there. You've got to work with the grain. And so you can see here, going, grain's going that way, back and forth. So that means that as we go that way, we're cutting with the grain on this side of the groove. But to cut the other side of the groove smoothly, we've got to go the other way. So imagine it like you're holding a bunch of straws and you can push one way of it, but if you go the other way, you're gonna, gonna catch into it. So you just have to look at what you're doing. So there's four different changes of direction. So that one needs to go that way. 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 And that one needs to go that way. So it's it's not too complicated. And you'll soon see, because it starts to, what I call, rag the wood a little bit. Kind of just rags it rough. So if you just pay attention to which way the grain's going, your chisel's cut a lot easier. And just keep rotating this round. There's no point trying to work on top of yourself, kind of, you want to make sure that it's where it's easiest to work. So at the moment, I'm finding it kind of this quarter easiest to work. So I'm kind of working it round. I'm using my body weight. I'm holding the chisel between, on my left hand at the moment, and my right hand on top. And you kind of hold them in tension between each other. So like, this one's almost pulling away as this one's pushing. And it gives you incredible amounts of control that you can just kind of slice through the wood. Um, and I'm using the mallet as well. And the mallet gives you more control really than using my hand in a way. You can just give it little taps. You can adjust your, your pressure of your, of your cut, lift your chisel up or down to adjust how much you want to go in or out of the wood. And you're not, so you're not making this groove in one go around with the chisel. That's just not going to happen. It's, gonna, it's only going to take about 15 minutes. And then we'll get a bit of sandpaper 
and sand up the groove a little bit. It gives that bit of a handmade feel to it as well. We should line this out like we would a normal carving. So we're going to go around the letters. I'm going to use a V tool. And like I said, I wouldn't normally sit down, but it works better for kind of the camera at the moment. So I'm going to go up the one side, up the other side, across the top, and just to kind of rough out my letters really. Once that's done, I can look at lowering all this around the letters. And kind of, I'm just going to blend this in, I think, on either end from this. And once we've got kind of that sorted, then we can look at kind of striking the letters out so they're a bit sharper and crisper. But if we do this VTOR, and what I'm going to do is I'm kind of, so I've had it like that, but I'm going to tilt it over a bit. So the upright. Basically, we're keeping the waist on the waist side. And better stood up. Just like that. And then the same on the other side, I'm twisting it over, you'll see. And we'll call this line and then. I'm not really sure where we're going up this edge, but we'll just do it like that for now. We can take a line across the bottom here. In the same way. And across the top. There we go, we're lined in there. We'll do the same with these other letters. So I've roughly lined out those letters there. Now with a bigger chisel, so this is like a number six gouge, and I've got some different sizes of this now. I'm gonna lower the background a little bit, so as big as I can get in there really, and then I can also use a smaller number six as well. And this is called lowering, and it's kind of what we do in relief carving. Just be mindful of grain direction, but we're just trying to rough our background lower. I'm leaving a bit of a, leaving a bit of a ridge around here between this groove and the writing. My idea is I'll just have that as like a little lip, I think. Um, but yeah, like I said, you want to try and go as big a chisel as you can. We won't level the background just yet. I think we'll just crack on. And we won't go too far into the letters at the moment either. Be careful with like wispy bits like that. What you don't want to do is pull it off and then pull a, like a big bit of the actual letter off. It'd be hard to come back from at the moment. So you want to make sure you have gone deep enough with your V tool and sometimes it's worth getting it back out. But we'll use some straight chisels in a minute. And like I said, we're going to blend the end in. We're going to use some flatter chisels and we're going to do the square bits of the letters. And we'll do the easy ones first, which is always the nicest thing to do because it feels like you've done a bit. So I've got myself kind of what they call an elongi chisel. So kind of beveled both sides. This one's a little bit offset. It's actually one of my favorites because of that. 
Um, I have got a bigger one, which I did wonder, but it is mm, just slightly too big. So I think this is the one I'll be using mainly to kind of do all the straight bits, and I've got some smaller ones somewhere. I need to get them out as well. And so if I do all the straight bits first, we can just strike it with the mallet as well. It's kind of one strike. And again, leaning over so that we're not kind of bruising the wood on the bits we want to keep. Because my hand's covering that perfectly so you can't see anything. But I'll do this other side and see if I can hold my hand in a weird way so you can see. So I'm leaning over whoop, a little bit. We're chiseling down. And obviously, we don't want to be making anything too weak. That's why writing's quite bold. And then we can take our chisel that we're using for taking the waste out, and we can go up to that now, just carefully, and remove it. We could use, we could actually use a number three here, a bit of a flatter one. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea. So going from the one that we're using for lowering to one that we use for leveling out. So that this one's what we're going to use to level out our background to make it look less kind of tooled and textured, although sometimes I like that look, but I don't think that's going to work well on this board. So the idea, not to push too hard and take this eye completely off, but I mean, when we use the mallet, it does give us a, a good range of control. You have to be probably more careful when you're, you're doing your two-handed grip and you can kind of just get a bit carried away with what you're doing, especially if it's like a dip. So you can kind of push through one bit and then you can kind of slip and go through into something else. You just gotta be a little bit careful of what you're doing. That looks all right, that side so looks like, actually, wants to be a bit deeper on the other side of that eye. So let's just go down a little bit. And try not to let those lines go past. But what I don't have to do is find ways of kind of removing lines that I've chiseled in too deep. And keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. If we can avoid that, it's always good. I'm not going to be able to hit that. So let's find a small straight chisel. Okay, you've got some smaller chisels here. This is a nice one, a little kind of fantail on the end of it. Kind of scoops out nicely. And it's about perfect for the width of the end of the lettuce. Knock it in. And then we can remove the waste. I've started doing inside the letters now as well, so I switched to some smaller chisels. So I've got few little curved ones to go around the outsides of the D's and the B's and the R's and try and keep it from being wispy and then inside the same again I've got this nice little curved fishtail one very fine and I can kind of hook stuff out in there so it's a case of getting it out and trying not to flick out don't try to flick ever with this because you could catch a bit of grain Take the whole piece out and it'll never look quite the same again. I mean, actually, I see there what I've done. I've taken that outside bit as the same width as this, so that's what I'm probably going to do around the outside there, just to make it look tidy. So we've gone around the outside, and then we can just kind of use the same chisel. Not going too deep, work from one side. Oh, I did the flicky thing then, didn't I? Not to do that. Yeah, so let's make sure it's kind of the fibers are cut really with your downward strikes. And then we can go from the other way. Okay, a bit of white spirits. Let's take off 
the label and then we can give it a nice sand. We can try and smooth out any of the, the rough writing that we're not behind the, not the rough writing, the rough background. If we're not happy with any of it. Should be wearing gloves. That's looking quite nice. I think what I need to do now is just a bit of smoothing out on this background. There's a few places around some of the letters I've used some gouges maybe a little bit too steep and there's a little bit on this ring around here that wants just tidying up a touch. But I quite like that. I'm talking with my wife about this actually about how far you take a project and some of the old ones I've seen have got like a nice kind of wheat sheaf on there but it does make it a certain thing and I think keeping it like that makes it a bit more modern and a bit more kind of what we like so I'm gonna leave it like that no more embellishment I think that's plenty so the idea now is build up a few coats of oil on it, it needs to be food safe loads of people love mineral oil I'm not a massive fan as it's petroleum based I'm gonna use tongue oil pure one uh, I don't buy it this big, I buy big, big, I haven't got one in here, big tubs of it. But I'm going to put this on it. That's what we will do. Oh, look at that through Around all the letters, I put too much oil on here. I'll spread some to the back. Right, it's making a nice fun project. I liked having the lettering raised rather than carved into it, so it's a little bit different. I also like having practical applications for carving projects. So like my carved trivet that I did before, I'll put a link up above there now. Having something that's like actually practical and can be used and is quite pretty and nice to kind of have around is really good. And when you make lots of stuff, you obviously your partners and people get fed up of you having hundreds of wooden items in the house that you've made. So, you know, this is a practical item. It can come out. It doesn't have to be in the way. It can be used instead. So I'm really happy with this. If you make one, let me know. Uh, I'd love to see it. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.